Oh, boy. <laughs> what? I can't comment without violating our agreement that I not criticize your work. <laughs> then what was oh, boy? Great restraint on my part. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the science here. Perhaps you mean a different thing than I do when you say science. <laughs> Okay, how's that? You actually had it right in the first place. <laughs> Once again, you've fallen for one of my classic pranks. <laughs> Bazinga. They're called tattoo sleeves, look. <laughs> yeah, I bought them online, Raj got a set too. <laughs> Fantastic, right? Put them on, have hot sex with some freaky girl with her business peers, take them off and I can still be buried in a Jewish cemetery. <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to go to a goth nightclub. Really? Bazinga. <laughs> None of you ever see my practical jokes coming, do you? And you're listening to NPR's Science Friday. Joining us today by phone from his office in Pasadena, California, is Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Oh, this is gonna be a Wyatt. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Cooper. My pleasure, Ira. Now, let's talk about magnetic monopoles. Can you explain to our audience just what a monopole is? Of course. First, consider an ordinary magnet, which has, as even the most uneducated in your audience must know, two poles. <clears throat> uh, north and south pole. If you cut that in half, you have two smaller magnets, each with its own north and south pole. Uh, Dr. Cooper, I think there might be something wrong with our connection. Uh, no, I hear you fine. As I was saying, an ordinary magnet has two poles. The primary characteristic of a monopole is that it has only one pole, hence monopole. A requirement for string theory, or chem theory, if you will, is the existence of monopoles. We're going to combine these chemicals with ordinary dish soap, creating a little exothermic release of oxygen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For me vengeance. Yes, exactly. This is brilliant, Sheldon. How are we going to deploy it in Kripke's office? Already taken care of. Observe. This is a live shot of Kripke's lab via a mini webcam I was able to install thanks to a dollar bill discreetly placed in the night janitor's shirt pocket. <laughs> At the same time, I also secured large quantities of these chemicals above the tiles in the drop ceiling. Uh, Sheldon, you remind me of a young Lex Luthor. <laughs> you flatter me, sir. Let me guess, motion sensors? Yes, the reaction will be triggered when Kripke reaches the center of the room. Mwahaha. <laughs> I gotta say, I am really impressed. This is truly the Sheldon Cooper way to get even. <laughs> uh, it may be low tech, but I still maintain the whoopee cushion has comic validity. <laughs> Here comes Kripke. Who is that with him? I believe that's the president of the university. And the board of directors. Abort, abort! There is no abort. Well, how could you not put it in an abort? I made a boo-boo, all right? I think the board will really appreciate how well we're using that NSA grant, President Sieber. Right here, we have a micro-controlled plasma. <laughs> wow. Well, looks like the Ganges on laundry day. <laughs> At least they don't know it was you. Hello, Kripke. <laughs> this classic prank comes to you from the malevolent mind of Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> if you'd like to see the look on your stupid face, this video is being instantly uploaded to YouTube. Oh, and a hat tip to Leonard Hofstadter and Raj Kuthrapali for their support and encouragement in this enterprise. Well, I'm going back to India. What's your plan? <laughs> you 
said I could buy a desk. This isn't a desk. This is a brobding, nagging monstrosity. Is that the American idiom for giant, big-ass desk? It's actually British. Can you say it again for me? Brobding Nagian. One more time? Brobding Nagian. Not three times fast? Brobding Nagian. Brobding Nag <laughs> How did you even get it in here? That's for me, Ramon, Julio, Jesus, and Rodrigo to know, and you to find out. You've made your point. A fine prank. Very amusing. <laughs> now get it out. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I have three brothers and two sisters, Sheldon. I can do this all day. All right. If you're not going to remove it, I'll remove it for you. Knock yourself out. Move my desk. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. It's too broad, big What is that smell? Oh. Yes. What are you doing in there? I'm making hydrogen sulfide and ammonia gas. Just a little experiment in pest control. <laughs> Dude, I grew up in India, an entire subcontinent where cows walk in the street and nobody has ever had a solid bowel movement. <laughs> well, we'll just see how long you can hold out. Well, we'll just see how your noxious gas fares against my cinnamon apple scented aromatherapy candles. Didn't you say you're making hydrogen sulfide gas? Yes. Isn't that flammable? Highly. Oh, dear. <laughs> This is not over. Be sure to check the mail. How many times are you gonna tell me? What's with you? Well, nothing. Well, it's not suspicious that I'm fixating. It's consistent with my personality. <laughs> right. Hey, guys. More Halloween candy? Didn't you just buy a bunch of it yesterday? Oh, yeah, that's gone. <laughs> it's a rough month when Halloween and PMS hit at the same time. <laughs> Leonard doesn't have time to chat. He has to get the mail. Okay, will you relax? I'll get it in a minute. Hey, I was working. Open the mail. Excuse me. A couple of circulars, nothing important. What's with him? Hang on. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. What's up? It just occurred to me that I never formally congratulated you on your pending nuptials. So I hopped on the first bus and hightailed it down here to shake your hand. You put her there, you old so-and-so. Well, I'm gonna see it work in 12 hours. Don't you think it could have waited until then? Holy smoke, why didn't I think of that? You're a better man than I, Howard Wallowitz. You put her there, you son of a gun. Whatever. <laughs> Mike? Oh. It's... Oh, my God, Polly! What did you do? It was a harmless Halloween prank. Look! Howard has a heart condition, you know that? Well, I thought he made that up. Isn't hypochondria a common idiosyncrasy of Jewish people? Adrenaline. We're gonna have to inject it into his heart. We are? You are. I'm not strong enough to get it through his chest plate, and we've only got one shot. Oh, no, I can't. Hurry, we're running out of time. Okay. Just do it. Oh, God. One, two, three. <laughs> Trick or treat, bubble up. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no. You mean this was all a ruse? Oh, how could I be so stupid? <laughs> Bazinga punk, now we're even. Oh.
Oh, bother. Well, isn't that just always the way? You go to staple something and you're out of staples. Gosh, wish I'd known that earlier today when I was at staples. <laughs> you ever think of paper clips right there? Well, no, no. I need something more permanent to join these papers. Say, uh, don't you keep staples in your top desk drawer? I don't know, maybe. Be a lamb and check. <laughs> right? <gasps> Who do we have here? <laughs> it's a snake, the terrifying snake. Oh, did some bad man put us in a drawer? <laughs> Stop talking like that. You've been rendered speechless by fear. Let's go to the biology lab and find you some nice, yummy mice. I tried to scare an Indian with a snake. Yeah, come on, Cooper, you're better than this. Sheldon, it took me all morning, but I found the owner of the video store, and I am happy to report that he died peacefully in his sleep, drunk at the bottom of a pool. <laughs> Anyway, there is no one to return the DVD to, so this issue is resolved. <sighs> and I'd just like to point out that even though the sweater was uncomfortable, I didn't use it as an excuse to antagonize everyone around me. You know, you could reimburse the video store owners next of kin. Or it's resolved. <laughs> and that next of kin thing sounds pretty good. This is yours. <laughs> okay, Sheldon, I am out of options. Video store owner Nurses Manukin has no next of kin. Well, you seem hot under the collar. Or is that the sweater? <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. It, it's because I spent all afternoon at the Armenian church where his funeral mass was held. According to Father Solakian, no one attended. Luckily, my trip wasn't a complete waste. I lit a candle and prayed for your death, but I'm not Armenian, so it probably won't work. <laughs> this is over, right? Oh, not necessarily. I, mean, I suggest you look for long-lost relatives, uh, either in Armenia or Lebanon. Listen to me, Sheldon. I am not going to Lebanon to return Super Mario Brothers the movie! You know, it might be fun. You love hummus. Why isn't this bothering you? Isn't your brain getting itchy? Uh, this is on your card. This could be ruining your credit score. Why isn't this making you crazy? Leonard, I have something to tell you, but I want you to promise not to flip out. So what? <laughs> Seven years ago, I found out the DVD was late and I paid for it. <laughs> what? I was going to mention it at the time, but then I thought, someday, this might be a teachable moment. Sheldon. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you look amazing. I find you guilty of murder because you are killing it. <laughs> well, technically, the Supreme Court wouldn't determine a defendant's guilt or innocence in a criminal matter. They could only reverse or revamp a jury's conviction based on a constitutional or statutory issue. <laughs> Why are you laughing? His statement was factually correct. <laughs> You're sitting in my spot. <laughs> you don't have a spot? What is wrong with you today? Maybe he's cranky because he's off his bathroom schedule. <laughs> well, I can understand how that would make someone irritable. Interesting fact. Irritable comes from the Latin, susceptible to anger. 
<laughs> Just because I used a word doesn't mean I want its etymology. No, interesting fact, <laughs> etymology comes from the Greek. You are being so annoying, stop it. <laughs> and why are you two laughing? <laughs> Sheldon, he's being you. He's dressed as you for Halloween. <laughs> oh. Well, so you're not laughing at him. You're laughing at me. The, we're not laughing at you. We're laughing with you. But I'm not laughing. <laughs> then the first one.